It's another Saturday morning Jim Jam Jibber Jabber but this is a little bit different from the last one I did in that I'm not going to be talking to you and just showing you some pretty pictures of the beautiful countryside around here. I want to show you what I've been up to because I've been making things. I've been remaking things or a thing let me start that again. I haven't been making anything. What I've been doing is repurposing. Repurposing an old thing and making it into something a little bit more modern and something that we can use um, because it was unusable before. So, without further ado, let us continue. First things first, little bit of a backstory. We were donated a piano some years ago, um, three or four years ago. An old, um, I think it was a school piano. Very basic, not an expensive one, and not overstrung, upright piano. It's a beautiful piece of furniture in the shape of the wood and the fact that it is a musical instrument is, is gorgeous. The only issue was or there were actually, there were many issues. Uh, it was covered in paint splashes, which we could clean off, but not all of the keys worked. Uh, three or four of them were just completely dead. And the ones that did work, oh, it was woefully out of tune. And apparently it could not be tuned, certainly not to concert pitch. On cursory examination, when you take all the bits off, that all the panels that allow you to look at the mechanisms, you can see that actually some of the mechanisms were broken. Repairable? Probably repairable. But all the felt pads are all worn, as well as being extremely filthy, they were all worn. And also you could see just behind the all the strings um, and the cast iron harp, there is a wooden plywood soundboard and that had split that to repair well it's a mammoth job basically just for that one reason it was not economically viable to save this piano so the decision was made because we loved the the shape of the piece of furniture didn't particularly like the color um, but we loved the shape that we would like to keep it in some way but make it useful we thought well we've got the room it would be nice if it was slightly smaller because it is a very bulky piece of furniture but let's um, let's try and keep it so I hatched an idea so what have I turned the piano into well it's a jukebox it's a digital jukebox. It allows me to play audio and video. It's a client for my Plex server. It is controlled by a wee keyboard underneath here. And this is an old netbook. Um, used to run on Windows 7, now running on Linux. So this system allows me to scroll through the hundreds of albums that I have of artists or I can search for particular artists very easily um, as you can see here I can scroll and choose just a random artist I don't know, it doesn't matter who it is and I can choose some tracks, particular tracks, or an album. Press play. Thank you. 
plaques being built into it. Also we have underneath, here's my Echo Dot already built into there. Alexa, good morning. Good morning. Oh, and while I remember, people have asked, but the pedals are just for show. They don't do anything. So a, a challenge I set myself for this project was for me to build it or redesign it and repurpose this piano without spending any money. Now, I didn't quite manage that because I did have to spend some money on a little bit of electronics um, and a cable or two. But all in all, it came in under £10. Um, I had the paint um, and I had the speakers and amp. A word on that, these are not the best speakers and not the best amplifier, um, but they can be upgraded. Um, and let me just show you. It's a mess at the moment. There's one or two things I need to do to finish off so the cable management isn't up to scratch just at present. Um, but the main pieces are all there and you can see what I've done. So this is the innards, the back end of the piano. And obviously there is no harp. Um, but what I have done is I've put a shelf at the bottom uh, that goes, this one here that goes straight the way through. That's where the keys used to be and um, that houses that little um, netbook. These are just old uh, PC speakers that had a built-in amplifier. Um, not bad quality, actually the sound isn't too bad and I just ripped out the uh, amplifier and I put all the bits and pieces into the front there. So as you see, as I did say, the cables are a mess at the moment. That's because there is um, another cable yet to plumb in. Um, that's the audio from the Echo Dot into the amplifier. And once I've got that installed, I will do some cable management and this will be a lot tidier. Not that you'll see this, obviously, because it's pushed up against the wall, but um, it's a bit embarrassing. These little boxes are just speaker stands and they can be adjusted should I want to replace the speakers, which aren't fixed in. As you can see, they are just a brand called Hercules, which I've never heard of before, but actually produce not a bad wee sound. And you can see the mocked up speaker grill there. That was the original plywood panel, uh, decorative panel. And I've just cut an oval in there just to make it look pretty and put some speaker grill over the front of it. The monitor which sits in the front panel in the middle is just an old HP, I believe, monitor. I'm going to say it's a 17 inch. Um, there's actually about three or four centimeters at the top of screen that is unused because it's hidden behind this bit of timber. That's okay, that doesn't matter. I've set the browser size, which is what the Plex server uh, displays in, to fit this particular monitor or this opening, and that's fine. It remembers that and that's all it will show. And in fact, the monitor is set and held in. In here, you can see, this is actually attached through the four, uh, they call the visa screws, visa screws at the back there, you can see, and it's upside down. So this is accessible. That, and that 
The reason for that is because there are, let me just see, that wasn't too confusing, um, um, but there are the on-screen display buttons here and the on-off button um, and I wanted those accessible from the top of the piano. Um, so I turned it upside down. So as I mentioned, the one of the reasons we wanted to work on this was because it was a nice piece of furniture, but it was very brown. And the paint that we chose to work with is a chalk paint. It's called charcoal. It's actually available from Aldi. Rather cheap. And we decided to go for a distressed finish, which gives it a sort of slate grey with this white undercoat coming through because the brown wood was initially painted with a white um, undercoat primer. Um, I have left some of the brown woodwork still there. You can see. I mean it's it has its place. It can be really nice but it was an old school piano and it was rather tatty. So it, it suited being restored in this way. I've just kept that just for a bit of, so we know where the piano has come from. It's not a particularly famous brand and certainly, unfortunately, wasn't worth repairing. So we've gone for this distressed sort of, sort of French look. But we're quite pleased with it. I've never done a distressed piece of furniture before. Not to this extent anyway. And yeah, quite like the look of it. I needed to explain why I've done what I've done. I need to go back a few steps. It's all to do with music. My music collection was largely CDs. I got rid of all my vinyl years ago and I shouldn't have done but I did and I wanted to convert all of that uh, those CDs into digital format and put them on a computer and I ended up um, creating a home server using uh, software called Plex which is wonderful which is great and um, I can organize all my uh, music on there and listen to it through any device that I wish to connect to it. And I did that because I've, I've got a, a hatred of online streaming services like Spotify and Amazon Music and Apple Music. And I just don't like them. I, I don't like them on principle because they don't pay the artists enough money. Uh, and I don't like having to use the internet in order to get my music. And I didn't want to have to recreate the library of music that I have in an online version. Added to that, our internet was capped, so we paid for every extra megabyte of data that we downloaded. And listening to music actually cost us a lot more money than it would have done if our broadband was unlimited free. So there's a history behind why I transferred all the music over to Plex and why I wanted to use Plex server and Plex client in order to enjoy the music around the house. We purchased a Amazon uh, Echo Dot and I quite like using it and I linked it up to the Plex account and I can ask um, the Echo Dot to play stuff from my library which is great. But the issue with the Echo Dot, and I don't want to buy any other Amazon Alexa products, the Echo Dot is limited in that you don't have a screen and also it doesn't always understand what you're asking. Alexa, ask Plex to play Grey Skies.
um, and it's frustrating when you uh, ask for one artist and it suggests I didn't understand that but here's a completely different artist or even when you ask for music and it says would you like to con continue watching a film and you're talking to an Echo Dot you going, well how the hell am I going to watch a film on an Echo Dot and it frustrated me. The other thing is is <laughs> Sometimes I want to play an artist and I want to play an album and I cannot for the life of me remember the name of the title of the album and It's inability to scroll through. Yes, you can ask it. Yes, you can you can interrogate it But it doesn't always work And I'd love to just be able to scroll through and go. Yeah, that's what I want to play. Thanks very much So the echo dot has its limitations and finally We've always loved the piece of furniture that this piano was. It's a gorgeous, it's got gorgeous lines, it's, it's well made, um, but it does, or well, did, have issues. Firstly, it was, it was just a brown piece of furniture, dark brown, um, and there is far too much wood in our house as it is, and we're trying to tone down the wood, so I wanted to paint it. The other thing is, it, is, it was very, very big. So I've managed to cut off about six centimeters, 15 centimeters, sorry, six inches, 15 centimeters from the back. And what that has done also is made the whole box a lot lighter because I've got rid of the harp, the cast iron harp and the immensely heavy framework that that was attached to. So that's the reason I've done what I've done. The only other thing that people might want to know is really, well, how does it sound as a music centre? Well, it actually sounds really quite good. There's no point in me recording the, the sound of it because by the time it gets through the phone and through YouTube, it's totally different from what it sounds like in real life. Um, but it's, it's more than adequate for what we want. It's actually very pleasant. I was concerned that putting the speakers inside this box might make it a bit boomy. Um, but no, no, I think the speakers are so close to the grill that um, none of that bass resonance is, is happening. So I'm very pleased with the sound. And it's a small amplifier, so it doesn't go too loud, but we don't want it too loud, so everything works. So I'm very happy with it. Happy with the piece of furniture, happy with the function of the furniture, <laughs> of the um, Plex system that's built in, and happy with the sound it creates. I've yet to really utilize the um, Echo Dot system because I'm still waiting on a cable for that. Um, it's just a Y split cable that I'm waiting on and I'm sure once we, we can talk to it and tell it what to play um, the sound from that will be good as well. So there you go. Maybe it's inspired you to repurpose an old piano or another old piece of furniture. Um, it would be nice if you could let me know what you think. Um, subscribe, you'll get one of these videos every, ooh, every year or so that I produce <laughs> a project and um, it's been fun and please tell me what you think in the comments thanks very much